General Hospital Latest Update, Carly's Heroic Act, Nina's Desperate Plea, and Finn's Uncertain Future Revealed. Plus, is a major exit looming? Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day, after watching these videos, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Carly helps a badly beaten, spoiler, and things get heated when Nina and Drew argue. Today on General Hospital, Christina pays a visit to Sunny and gets a surprise, Michael and Willow celebrate their anniversary early, and Jason is filled in on events he missed out on by Diane. Jason meets Diane at the Corinthos Coffee Warehouse, where he's taking over Sonny's office. He explains he and Sonny were partners, and he still owns half of the business. He wants to know what happened with the rest of his estate, and why didn't it go to Carly, Danny, and Jake. She explains it's been in probate because it takes seven years without a body to have someone declared dead, but oddly enough the government was eager to issue his death certificate quickly. She assumes someone behind the scenes pulled strings. However now that he's back, he should be able to reclaim his estate with a minimum of fuss. Jason asks what about Carly, and asks why is she running Bobby's and not the Metro Court. Diane says in a word, Nina. She gives him the quick rundown of the merger scheme, and how Carly lost her half of the Metro Court in it, and Nina purchased it. She also explains Nina blames Carly for everything wrong with her life and how she turned Drew and Carly into the feds for sec violations, which cost Carly $5 million and Drew did some prison time. Now Carly is building back her life. Diane says she's astonishingly resilient, and Jason agrees. Diane tells Jason her paralegal was supposed to deliver some documents tonight, but it seems the hour got too late. She'll bring them to him tomorrow. Jason has one more favor, he wants her to tell Sonny that he's taking back his half of the company and working here. Trish seats Willow and Michael at the Metro Court to celebrate their anniversary. She then runs into Nina and informs her that Willow is here with her husband. She explains they are celebrating their anniversary and someone called ahead for a special dessert. Back at their table, Michael figured they'd celebrate their anniversary early, which is later in the month so as not to interfere with Brooke Lynn and Chase's wedding. They share a kiss, and champagne is sent over by Nina. She appears and wishes them a happy anniversary, and Michael and Willow's mood immediately is brought down. Michael thanks Nina but says they would have ordered champagne if they wanted it. She has arranged for a special dinner for them too, on her. Willow says she made it clear she doesn't want to see Nina, and she thought she was going to honor her wishes given she had stayed distant. Nina apologizes and thought because they came here. She says she will cancel everything and take the champagne away. Willow feels this is her fault, she should have picked another place. It was wishful thinking that Nina would keep her distance. Michael says they are here because she likes the food, and the chocolate souffle she loves has been ordered, so they should celebrate. She thanks him for being the best husband. He later presents her with a diamond bracelet, and she loves it but she wishes she had more places to wear it. It doesn't exactly go with her scrubs. She says she'll save it for special occasions, so he says he'll make sure more of them happen. He explains it was Wiley who chose it after he narrowed it down to a few choices. Willow can't believe Wiley didn't say anything, then again he's usually asleep when she gets home. She feels like she's missing so much of the kids' lives, and he's the one who has to fill her in on them. Michael reminds her that he will support her no matter what she chooses to do about work. He also points out that she doesn't have to work, as they have more than enough money. Willow agrees to think about it. Michael says there is other work she could do instead of at the hospital. Michael tells her about Lila being on the boards of various charities, and she could work those on her own time schedule. He thinks she'd be amazing at it. She's always amazed at how much he believes in her, and he makes her feel like the luckiest person in the world. They kiss. Michael gets an email about Aurora business and he says he'll talk to Drew about it tomorrow. Willow asks about Drew, as she's worried about him. She feels bad for him, everything changed for him overnight. She says Jason returned, Drew broke up with Carly, and the two of them basically cut him out while hiding Jason and didn't even tell him. She wonders how Drew is dealing with this. Michael tells her Drew can take care of himself. Christina drops by to see her dad, 
and Ava answers the door and says he's resting. She needs to speak to him, so she is going to wait. Sunny appears and is glad to see Christina. They sit down, and Ava leaves to get Christina some water. Sunny asks what is going on, and she tells him about her fight with Joss over him. Christina hates her holier-than-thou attitude. Sunny says Christina shouldn't have to defend him, and these are his battles to fight. Christina says she couldn't help herself, maybe it's just the hormones. Ava returns with water and a whiskey for Sunny. Christina looks shocked to see her father drinking again. Sunny asks her what else is going on, and how work is. Christina says work is fine, and Blaze is going to be the new face of deception. Sunny knew that, as he ran into Natalia at the Metro Court and she told him about it. Christina thinks it's a great opportunity for her, but Sunny is worried about how the fame might affect Christina with all that she's got going on. Christina says Allison isn't out, so she doubts she'll be in the spotlight with her. He asks how she feels about that. She is okay, with Ollie wanting to keep her personal life personal and not in the public eye. Christina says it would be the same thing if she was dating an up-and-coming male artist, and she wants to be known for her own achievements, not just a famous person's girlfriend. She also likes her anonymity. She's proud of Blaze, and she saw her in a meeting with Nina at Crimson. Sunny had no idea Nina was back at Crimson. Christina is glad she is for Ali's sake as Nina has more experience running that magazine than Carly. Sunny is happy for Nina, but something seems off. Why would Drew hire back the woman who put him in prison? Ava says he shouldn't worry about it, if Drew is up to something, Nina will figure it out and can take care of herself. Christina says it's getting late, so she should go as she has plans with Blaze. Christina heads out, and Ava tells Sunny that Christina seems good. Sunny asks if Nina told her that she got her job back and perhaps she didn't mention it to him. Ava says she hasn't heard from Nina, maybe her phone is buried under papers on her desk along with his divorce papers. They move in close, but are interrupted by a knock at the door. Diane arrives on behalf of Jason. She explains he's having all his assets returned to him, and he wants Sunny to know he's taking back his half of Corinthos coffee and he's setting up his office in the warehouse as they speak. Sunny says, message received, and walks out. At Bobby's, Carly gets a call from Drew, and she's glad to hear his voice. He explains he needs to get in touch with Jason, and asks her to give him a message that he got a visit from the FBI this afternoon. He tells her about the conversation he had with Kate's, but doesn't mention his name, and Carly is sorry he got dragged into this. Drew asks if Jason has mentioned where he's been these past years. Carly says he hasn't. Drew encourages Carly to stay out of his drama for her girl's sake, and Jason can take care of himself. Olivia shows up and fumes to Carly that Nina fired the room service waiter over complaints from a guest. Carly says the waiter is so sweet, everyone loves him, and she has to hire him back. Olivia says Nina's been on a rampage since Sunny dumped her. Carly can't believe Nina did that without her input. Olivia says it's not the only thing she's done without her knowing. She had the bathrooms on the first floor repainted a color she hates, and Olivia calls the woman a menace. Olivia decides to take off, she just needed someone to vent to. Then a woman shows up with documents Diane asked her to bring to Jason for a meeting. Carly says he's at his office, but she could drop them off for her. The woman says that would be great. Carly arrives at the waterfront in her car and sees two men beating up a third. She honks her horn and shouts at them to leave the man alone. They run off, and she rushes to the victim and is shocked to see its agent Kate's. He comes too, and she says she'll call 911. He says they jumped him from behind, he can't identify them, so it's pointless. However, they didn't take anything, and he doesn't think robbery was their intention. Carly says they need to get out of there before they come back, so she helps him to her car. Carly helps Kate's back to his room at the Metro Court. She doesn't know why he wouldn't let her take him to General Hospital. He explains he just needs some aspirin. She asks why he was there on the waterfront near Corintho's coffee. He evades her questions, so she demands to help him if he won't go to the hospital. She helps him sit down, and he thanks her. Back at the warehouse, Sunny shows up and tells Jason he's not wanted there. 
Nina shows up at Drew's office and cries to him about what happened with Michael and Willow. She needs help and begs Drew to help her get back into Willow's life. He can't, and says she has to take responsibility for ruining that relationship and there is nothing he can do. Nina says he could appoint her to the Aurora Board of Directors, that way Michael would have to deal with her. He asks what he's going to get out of doing this? Nina says, for one thing, it would drive Carly crazy. Nina tells Drew that Carly has everyone wrapped around her fingers, even him, and her sense of entitlement knows no bounds. She says if he appoints her to the board of directors, Carly will think they are allies, and she'll come running to him demanding his attention. She tells him he doesn't owe Carly anything, he already played hero for her once. Now he could help her, he could help her get close to her daughter again. Drew again tells her Willow doesn't want her in her life. She begs him to have compassion as he knows what it's like to be separated from your child. He lashes out and reminds her that she did that to him. She retorts that it was his own crime that brought down those consequences. She points out he too has this shiny victimhood status he keeps playing. He goes to walk away, and she grabs him by the arm and says, don't turn away from me. Suddenly his shirt rips open. He wonders what is wrong with Nina. She jokes about the Italian designer of his shirt not knowing what those buttons go through, and they're irreplaceable. Drew takes his shirt off, throws it at her, and tells her it's all hers. He asks if there is anything else she wants. Nina asks if Carly ever told him that he has a nice body. Drew responds that she's only seen half of it. Nina taunts, you boys are so brave on your bar stools or behind your desks, but what if a girl makes moves back? She begins to unbutton her blouse and asks if he'll cower. Instead, he kisses her, but quickly pulls away, and she laughs that he's such a boy scout. Drew says a man lets a lady say no. She reponds, did I say no? They close the door and take things to the desk, and the clothes begin to fly off. Today's next update, is Finn leaving General Hospital, Michael Easton's cryptic posts cause exit fears on social media. More alterations may be taking place at the ABC soap opera General Hospital, according to spoilers. Let's speak about how this went viral online because fans have been exploding on social media over the prospect of a major exodus, specifically Michael Easton's possible departure as Hamilton Finn. When Finn confided in Elizabeth Baldwin, Rebecca Herbst, about his friend in Doctors Without Borders and how much he missed having a purpose like that, suspicions first began to grow. It made viewers wonder about Michael Easton's whereabouts and sparked rumors that Finn would eventually include Doctors Without Borders in his escape plan. It's simple to see Finn using such a task to make up for the emotional hole left by Gregory Chase's, Gregory Harrison, death. Naturally, it would be difficult for Finn to leave Doctors Without Borders given that he has parental duties and Violet Finn, Jophiel Love, to consider. If Finn leaves, it's possible that he'll leave town and go on some kind of journey trip with Violet. If his father doesn't have time to cross everything off the list, maybe Finn and Violet can complete Gregory's bucket list. In any case, after all these years, Michael Easton finally joined Instagram, which increased rumors that he would be coming out as Finn. Roger Howarth, ex Austin Gatlin Holt, experienced a similar situation soon before he left GH. Just like Easton, Howarth joined Instagram and started posting thoughtful photos before the program gave Austin a significant send-off. It's important to note that Howarth gave a credit to Easton and made a request to his fans after sharing a throwback post featuring him last week. I hope everyone keeps finding his words to be enjoyable. Without a doubt, he's worth your time, Howarth stated. That appeared almost like Howarth was commiserating with another ousted soap star, which gave credence to the Easton leave rumors. Reposting that old clip, Easton told Howarth in the comments that he was a fine man. In another article, Easton discussed Finn's early interactions with Roxy and expressed gratitude for his current fictional family. It was just another instance of Easton appearing to be thinking back on good times, possibly in anticipation of leaving. Given that Easton later shared a behind-the-scenes photo implying Finn was getting ready for Harrison Chase's, Josh Swickard, and Brooklyn Cordemain's Amanda Seton wedding, it appears that filming is still ongoing. There are, however, a few exit warning signals to consider. 
While there is no official confirmation that Easton is at General Hospital, a number of social media sources purporting to have inside information have fueled the hysteria by insisting it is genuine. Really, is Michael Easton quitting the show? We'll make sure to provide updates on any formal departure news and any cast-related forecasts, but only time will tell. In the interim, there may be some wedding drama on General Hospital, according to teasers, so keep checking back. We appreciate you watching, and for more up-to-date news, please click the subscribe button.